Today, we are going to be doing a read aloud to the book, The Story of America, Westward Expansion. This is for fifth grade. The book's guided reading level is third to fifth grade. Um, the genre is nonfiction, and it is about America's history. So we are going to start with a picture walk. As we look at the pictures in this book, I want you guys to think to yourself, what is this book really about? Okay, <clears throat> so on the front we see multiple wagons, some cattle, they're being pulled by horses, stuff like that, okay. <clears throat> so we know it's not in today's world. Oh, we see some Native Americans. Ooh, we see a nice map. Okay. Oh, we see another map. We see some boats carrying some people. Okay. Oh, we see this nice spirit leading some people somewhere. I wonder where. Ooh, we see war. Hmm. What that's about? Oh, and more war. Hmm. Strange. Okay, so can anyone tell me what they think this book is about? Yes, so the book is about America's history after the Revolutionary War. I think you're really going to enjoy learning about what life was like in the past and what decisions America made and why. Okay? Okay, so the story of America, Westward Expansion. Okay. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, a growing nation. On September 3rd, 1783, wow, that's a long time ago, representatives from Great Britain and the newly formed United States of America signed the Treaty of Paris. This document formally, formally ended the American Revolution. It also made the Mississippi River the western boundary of the United States. With the war behind them and a need for money, the U.S. government turned its eyes toward the frontier west of the original 13 colonies. Hmm. 13 colonies. Those were Virginia, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Hampshire, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, South Carolina, Georgia. I'm missing one. <gasps> North Carolina, of course. <laughs> okay. The Treaty of Paris represented the beginning of an exciting time in U.S. history, the age of westward expansion. During this time, the U.S. government obtained more and more land in western North America. Citizens and immigrants traveled west and settled land continually until the United States stretched from sea to shining sea. From sea to shining sea. Ah, uh, they must mean from the east coast to the west coast. That makes sense. Ah, uh, so this time in history that we're talking about is immediately following the Revolutionary War, which means America is a newly independent nation. Okay. Let's move on. The Louisiana Purchase. Hmm, let's see what that's about. By 1800, many U.S. settlers, mostly merchants, trappers, loggers, and farmers, relied heavily on the Mississippi River in the port of New Orleans for transportation and commerce. Commerce? What's that? Hmm. Let's go to our, our glossary, why don't we? Hmm. Commerce. Ah, the large-scale buying and selling of goods and services. Hmm. That's good to know. Okay. So, many Americans have even settled in areas west of the Mississippi, which Spain had recently sold to France. Uh-oh. President Thomas Jefferson quickly recognized how important the river port and western lands were to the future of the U.S. economy. In 1801, Jefferson sent a representative to France to purchase the port and receive permission to use the river. At first, France refused. However, Two years later, French officials surprised Jefferson by offering to sell the entire Louisiana Territory to the United States for $15 million. Wow, that was a lot of money in the 1800s. That's equivalent to about $300 million in today's money. That's crazy. 
with the Louisiana Purchase, Jefferson doubled the size of the United States. So as we can see here, this in the dark green is what was purchased in the Louisiana Purchase. This is what was already owned for the 13 colonies. Okay. Manifest destiny. Hmm. That's a new word. We'll have to see what that means. By the 1830s, it had been clear to many Americans that westward expansion was beneficial for the United States. The West had seemingly limitless natural resources, and more resources meant more money for the growing nation. As more people moved West, the idea of manifest destiny, hmm, there's that word again, became more popular. Manifest destiny was the belief that the United States had a mission to extend its western border all the way to the Pacific Ocean. Ah, so that's what manifest destiny means. Many people credit journalist John L. O. Sullivan for co coining the term in 1845. However, the idea had steadily grown more popular throughout the previous decade. Manifest Destiny became a popular national motto. Motto? Hmm. Let's go to our glossary and see what motto means. Ah, motto. A short saying that expresses a rule to live by. So their rule to live by was to go so far west that they made it all the way to the Pacific Ocean. Wow. It was used by those who supported political and military missions to expand the borders of the United States. Interesting, interesting. Texas joins the United States. What? That's crazy. Texas was once part of New Spain and later part of Mexico. In 1820, one year before Mexico gained its freedom, Spain began allowing Anglo-Americans to settle in Texas. Anglo-Americans, oh, that's a new word, even for me. Let's see what that means. An American of European descent who settled in Mexican Texas. Okay. Over the next 15 years, thousands of Anglo-Americans settled there. Many of the settlers believed that the United States would soon buy Eastern Texas from Mexico, and they hoped to be U.S. citizens once again in the near future. After winning a war with Mexico in 1836, Texas declared itself an independent nation. However, Texas struggled to defend itself against Mexico. Its economy also struggled. Some members of the Texas government asked the U.S. government to annex Texas. In 1845, the U.S. Congress agreed to make Texas the 28th state in the Union. This move angered the Mexican government, which had never recognized Texas' independence. Mm, this is getting juicy. Oh, the U.S.-Mexican War. Oh, no, we fought with Mexico. Rumors of a war with Mexico began stirring soon after Texas became a state. Oh, War over land. Isn't that crazy? Can you believe that? <sighs> Many U.S. citizens complained that the country had no right to kill Mexicans and take their land. Others, however, believed Mexico was at fault for owing the United States money and never acknowledging Texas's independence. President James K. Polk who had become president in 1844, viewed the war as a chance to gain important land in the West. In April 1846, Mexican troops crossed the Rio Grande to attack American forces in southern Texas, officially starting the U.S.-Mexican War. Oh no. Battles during the war took place in Texas, California, and Mexico. In September 1847, U.S. forces reached Mexico City. Soon after, Mexico surrendered. Mm. Okay, so we're going to stop here. So, the main idea of this book is about America expanding westward and how they did it. So, they started with the 13 colonies and soon grew to the control of the entire continent.